All right, everyone, first and foremost, a little bit of credit where credit is due, namely to yours truly, the Monmouth poll exposed as an outlier. Five new polls coming out right before the uh, Democrats decide who gets in and who doesn't at the next debate, the third round of debates, the final debates. Um, there was going to be a slew of polling, and, and it shows these five polls, is Emerson, CNN, uh, several, I can't remember all five of them. All of them show Biden above 30. That is the Monmouth poll showing him at 19, outlier ignore it ignore the monmouth poll entirely monmouth should be kicked out of the aggregate for it anyway the dnc right now it is this is this is grabbing up the ire even of the left-wing media um it's no fan of gabbard after she basically won in the second debates they crucified her and called her a russian pawn that plays a role in what's happening right now the DNC right now is pulling out every stop possible to keep her off the debate stage. I'll tell you why. They, they may end up allowing her if enough people chime in, but there's only like 24 more hours to choose who qualifies. I think they would rather deal with the ire of her fans if she doesn't qualify under their arbitrary bullshit rule system, which is what it is. The Democrats are crooked. That's why they have superdelegates as well. They want to coronate the winner. They definitely don't want a brokered style convention, a really messy, <laughs> they don't want a messy end result. It won't end well for them in the general election. Uh, why they want to keep Tulsi out is there's two reasons. They're not worried she'll be nominated. She's not viable. She's been too low for too long to be viable. She's never gained enough traction, but she has a small hardened fan base that's very tech literate. Here's why that's a problem. The first thing they're afraid of is that she'll attack Elizabeth Warren successfully like she did Kamala Harris. Now, it's not that they wanted to nominate Harris and they're pissed off at her. No, but Harris was never going to be the nominee. That was never something I really took seriously. A lot of people said, well, the Democrats want Kamala. The Clintonians may kind of like her, but I think that's on its way out in the neoliberalism of the world. I think that what they're worried about, right now they've got a three-way contest. Biden, Sanders, Warren. For the bread and circus low info voter crowd, at the very least, it looks it's the illusion of choice. So it keeps them placated. But what happens if Gabbard comes along, echoes Trump, and attacks Elizabeth Warren and knocks her off her rocker so that she becomes non-viable? Then it begins to look like just Joe Biden getting coronated. It looks like 2016. Joe Biden versus Bernie Sanders is going to be exactly like Hillary Clinton versus Bernie Sanders. He'll sweep up the states. The Sanders fans will whine and whine about being cheated. They'll refuse to vote for Biden, who they'll cast as demented, which isn't even a joke this time. And ultimately, Trump will coast to re-election because the Democrats will be fractured. So that's a problem. Other problem is this. The far-left media, that is the independent voices within the far-left media, attacked Gabbard after she attacked Kamala Harris in the second debates, brought up her prosecutorial record and her lies. They cast her off as, she's, she parties with Assad. She's a Russian asset. She must secretly be in league with Trump to cause problems in the Democratic Party. If she does well at the next debate, what you'll end up with is the 3 or 4% of the party that likes Tulsi Gabbard sparring with this extreme far-left fringe of the fringe of the Bernie bros and Elizabeth Warren fans, and it'll cause a civil war in the Democratic Party. Because people will be convinced... Uh, that, that Tulsi Gabbard is like an agent of Vladimir Putin, which, I mean, it's obviously bullshit. The claim is such a farce that any sane person will dismiss it out of hand. Not every person is sane. The Democrats are an extremist party at this point. They, what's happened is that the neoliberals who were doing just fine with just the business Dems on the side that they sort of took out as a pawn once in a while to wine and dine the Rust Belt, they decided, hey, we're going to take this far left fringe that's growing in the millennial generation. We're going to get them and, and they don't have any money to give us, but they've got tech skills and, you know, there's millions of them. We'll get them to vote for us. Well, it's backfired. Now they want more power. They've become egotistical. And so now you have AOC, the face of the Democratic Party. Ban cow farts. They're bad for the ozone layer. And the Democrats are suffering a meltdown. The DNC is, to their credit, ironically enough, they're at least trying to exercise strategic judgment. They know that if Gabbard gets on the stage, she's the only one of the lower tier candidates who has the sort of fire and the speaking skills to actually attack the top tier legitimately. You saw how Kamala Harris sputtered and was totally deflated by her after the second debates. Now, Harris was already declining at the time. It was obviously it was obvious she was going to be the Ben Carson of the race, which is exactly what I predicted and what happened. But Gabbard really bludgeoned her. 
completely destroyed a person who was running roughly around third place at the time. Or a strong fourth place at the very least. She had become technically viable. Technically is still in that level, but she's she's a seven. She's on the decline. She's down near Buttigieg more than she is the top tier now. She's part of that second tier with Buttigieg. And ironically enough, Yang is there. It's, like, hilarious. Um, what happened is that they're afraid that she's sharpened her nails now. Like, she knocked Kamala Harris off her pedestal. That means that her, her core fans, Tulsi Gabbard's fans, love her. They thought it was monumental. They want her in the debate. They want blood. They want her to go out. And she, because Tulsi Gabbard knows she's setting the stage to win in a future presidential election, she doesn't. she's not going to win in this one. She knows that. She's smart enough to understand. She's going to go for the jugular. She's going to go for Elizabeth Warren. She wants to be the strong female figure within the Democratic Party. She wants to be like AOC, only from the other end of politics on maybe military issues and diplomacy. She'll rip Elizabeth Warren apart. And, she, and the DNC knows she can. The problem is if Elizabeth Warren falls, Sanders is not a viable alternative to Biden. He's even older. He's crazy. He's extremely far left. Elizabeth Warren has kept up the appearance of moderation in her views over time. In fact, she was a right-wing Democrat for most of her career. By modern standards, she would be considered to the right of Joe Biden on issues until the last couple of years. She's been maneuvering herself as, this, as the progressive. As someone who's not quite socialistic like a Bi like a, a Bernie Sanders or a Harris, but she's also she's outside of center and she's strong. She's a strong female. That way, a male candidate like Buttigieg can't attack her, O'Rourke can't attack her, Yang can't, anyone who attacks her who's male, that includes the, the other front runners, basically, at this point, can't do anything. They'll get called sexist. Her fans will scream sexism, and they'll apologize for, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, says Bernie Sanders in an imaginary third debate where he actually has the balls to point out her inconsistency on issues, or maybe her inconsistency in what race she is. Oh, I'm really, really sorry. Yeah, that was a low blow. They can't bring up her Native American ancestry bullshit because they'll sound like Trump and they'll get called racist. Tulsi Gabbard's a non-white female. She's uniquely qualified to fuck Elizabeth Warren in the ass. The DNC knows this, and they don't want her on the stage with Elizabeth Warren. They're terrified that that would happen. Haven't they called down the third debates to a single stage like it's not going to be a two-night special? Yeah, it wouldn't go over very well if Gabbard's there with Elizabeth Warren, as she definitely would be. Nobody else on the stage would be female other than the female that she already destroyed, namely Kamala Harris. Who the hell is she supposed to focus her fire on? That's what the DNC is worried about. Alarm bells are going off in their heads. So we see in the next 24 hours whether they actually listen to their constituents. By and large, even a lot of the neoliberals are interested in seeing Gabbard debate. And if she doesn't, it'll be a bore fest. It'll be Joe Biden mumbling his way through and probably doing well enough to be nominated. Bernie Sanders saying off the wall, you know, crazy shit and being kind of exciting, but old and befuddled and, and decreasingly exciting. And Elizabeth Warren pretending to be the astute, strong, empowered female that we all know that she's really not. That's what the debate will boil down to. Yang will come out, practically cry as he talks about his uh, apparent inability to explain UBI. Maybe he'll cry again about guns and how bad they are, because he's never actually used one, doesn't understand them. Uh, and, and, and then Beto O'Rourke will come out, and much like him making his shitty burgers, or getting his shitty haircut, or his shitty skateboarding skills, he'll make a mockery of himself. And Cory Booker will be there. It's funny, because Gabbard in some polls is ahead of these losers, and she's just behind Buttigieg, and yet she's not allowed in the debate. Well, this should show you the Democratic Party is an autocratic corporate facility. It's not a group of people who care about the lay voters of the Democrats. And then the funny part is anyone who's, who's concerned about this, about Gabbard being kept out, they're like, oh, you're a Trump fan or something. I'm seeing like other Democrats like literally raising concerns and they're getting called like MAGA hat wearing racists. Oh, you're just an evil person. You want this non-white female to be in the Dem debates. What a terrible person you are. No, we should have more men, men up on stage. Because Kamala Harris is, isn't viable. They want to coronate Elizabeth Warren. Basically, the DNC wants, doesn't mind Biden. But they're worried about him not making it to the finish line. They're worried that because of his mistakes, his age, his obvious early onset dementia, they're terrified he's going to randomly fall down and not get up, so to speak, politically. Leaving Elizabeth Warren is the only viable neoliberal. There is no other viable neoliberal in the top echelon of the race. They're all leftists. Harris is already inviable. Tulsi Gabbard neutered her. 
Bernie Sanders is a fanatic. He'll never be the president of the United States. He's even older than Biden. The Democrats don't have anyone who isn't Elizabeth Warren right now to lead. Cory Booker, Beto O'Rourke, Annie Yang. You really think these people are capable of waging a national election? Take a look at them. Early on, this was before Biden even jumped in. I said, look at the field and ask yourself one thing. This is what matters within bread and circus perception politics. Which one of these people would you cast as the president? Like if you were, if it, this is a casting call. We're trying to find someone to play a fictitious president. Right now, our top, our top contender is Donald Trump. What are his qualifications? He is the fucking president. So he wins by default. He's got the incumbent advantage. Okay, we've got that out of the way. We're looking at these other people. You know, we're, we're kind of like some people don't like Trump in this role as the president. Let's look at these other people. Who are we going to cast? Who looks believable? Joe Biden fits the ticket because he's been VP, but he's demented. Oh, whoops, that might be a problem. Who else looks believable? The DNC has decided it's Elizabeth Warren. She might be the villainous president. She's the person you cast off as the, the corporate lackey president who's like really mean and throws things at her staff and shit like Klobuchar on steroids. Um, but, you know, <laughs> is Kamala Harris believable in the role? No, no. Oh, yeah, I smoked weed and listened to Tupac. If you were going to cast Kamala Harris as the president, it would be a comedy. It'd be a stoner comedy. If you were going to cast Bernie Sanders as the president, it'd be a stoner comedy. No, who would you cast in a drama? Who would you cast as the president who saves America from a Russian nuclear threat? Trump fits the bill because he's already there. Biden fits the bill because he's already been there in the White House. VP is close enough to president to count. There is nobody else other than the villainous Elizabeth Warren. The DNC is run by villains. They don't care if she's evil. Of course she is. She's pandering and slimy. She's a perfect Democratic contender. But Tulsi Gabbard, if she gets on a debate stage, might fucking completely destroy her. And they don't want to have to pay her off before the debate, I guess. So they, they, she refused their money, so they're trying to keep her off the stage. Watch. That's probably what they'll do. She should go on YouTube and live stream. As an alternative to the debate, she should just give an hour-long speech and say, Look, these fucking losers aren't going to be able to lead the country. Fucking listen to me. It'd be funnier. If she goes maverick and does something like that, not only it would be legendary and she would get a lot of youth support for her next run, which I, we all know she's going to run again. She's not going to make it this time. She's not going to be the nominee. But I tell you, she would be a strong contender in 10, 15 years. You wait a couple more cycles. You, you wait till Trump's gone. Maybe get another president there. She's in her 40s, maybe 50 or something. She'd be very, very powerful as a presidential contender, especially if she stays active in politics. If she moves on beyond her current role, to get a couple more offices under your belt, um, get some more experience in. You know, you know, pander and get rich like Elizabeth Warren has. Maybe you should take, Tulsi Gabbard should ironically do what uh, Elizabeth Warren did. She should mock Elizabeth Warren in the kitchen with the beer. And only with Gabbard, she's got like the Jack Daniels and she just straight up chugs it and like shit like that. And it would be considered cool. And it would look nat natural because it would actually be funny. Unlike Elizabeth Warren. It was funny because she opens the beer and the way she looks at her husband while she's drinking the beer just looks like it's all staged. <laughs> it was so fucking funny. I expected her to start rambling about powwow chows. Like, oh, here's our mayonnaise omelets. My Cherokee ancestors loved this shit. <laughs> they also loved Rolling Rock or whatever shit piss beer she was drinking. <laughs> oh my god. I mean, I can't get over how funny it'll be if Elizabeth Warren is not. Right now, the two most likely people to, to face off against Trump are, are a dude who literally can't speak anymore. He's, he's completely tongue-tied. He's fucking totally demented. He's the front-runner of the Democratic Party. And then someone who spent 40 years lying about her ethnicity. That's going to go over so well. It's going to go over like an oil spill for the Democratic Party. That's about all. Peace out.